1417 from the Fundamentals of Chapter 14. We're working through conservation of energy problems. And this is probably one of the tougher ones we're going to be doing for these fundamental problems, or this set of fundamental problems in this, in this part of the chapter. Remember, there are various ways to tackle these problems. What I need you guys to get used to is just making sure your logic is good and then your problem setup is correct, which is always the hardest part, right? Um, so the, the way the book approximates or, or approaches this problem is they, what they do is they set the zero potential right here. Okay, so it's a 75 pound block released from uh, rest five feet above the plate. Determine the compression of each spring when the block momentarily comes to rest after striking the plate. Right, so they approach it in this manner. So initially, what what this says is that um, if we add up all the all the um, energies in the beginning, you know, we're going to have the potential energy, gravitational potential energy. Uh, we're going to have the kinetic energy initially. So let's say at at state one. Kinetic energy plus uh, two potential energies from sp springs AC, and then uh, potential energy from spring B. All that equals to the potential energy, gravitational potential energy at state two, plus the kinetic energy. Right at state two, plus two potential energies from the springs AC, plus the potential energy from spring B. All right. So we end up the way they set it up because they do y equals zero here, and it's starting from rest. We know that it's going to have zero potential gravitational energy. Uh, it's going to be zero kinetic energy. Both. Or, or I guess, sorry, not both, but all three springs are uncompressed, right? So they don't have any uh, potential energies. So plus zero, plus zero, okay? So this is telling you that because the system starts with zero energy, the rest of all the rest of uh, the energies at state two all have to add up to zero as well. All right, and the the way they do this is saying, okay. Well, it's going to be, um, you know, once at state, so this is like state one. And let's say this is where it ends up, y equals something, and this is state two, right? They're saying that, okay, um, you know, this is positive y, x. So it's going to be the, the weight, right, times the change in height of this of this block, okay? And we know that it's going to be minus 5, right, plus some distance, and they label it as some distance s, okay? And so... From here, um, we have the kinetic energy. So when it when it um, after it fully compresses all the way down, there's no kinetic energy. It comes to a, like a, a rest inst for an instantaneous second. Okay, so there's no kinetic energy, right? And then we end up with two potential energies from springs uh, AC, which is uh, let's call it K. Well, K and K prime, so K. Um, this will be, uh, what do we have? The total compressed length is going to be S squared plus the potential energy from that spring B, which has stiffness constant of K prime, times uh, this will be S minus 
point uh, two five squared. Okay. So, you know, it's gonna. Let's say this is the total distance s right here. Remember that b is gonna be s minus 0.25. Remember that, okay? Just because it's it starts at a lower at a lower uh, height, okay? So when you when we work through this, you should get. Um, let's flip back to what the book has, which is over here. Right, so that that's the way they approached it. All right, and it's so it's, it, it it makes sense, right? But not everyone's gonna see the 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 very the quickest, most efficient way of doing this. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is okay. Let's think of a different way to do this. Let's say I'm a rookie. I'm, this is my sophomore year, and I'm just tackling the problem how I think I should tackle it. So. The way I'm presenting it to you guys will be like this. All right, so I'm gonna say. By the way, if so, if you guys are satisfied with this way, go ahead and and, and wrap up. You should end up with of s equals point uh, s equals point five eight roughly, and then I guess s prime for for the little uh, for the other spring. It'll be 0.58 minus 0.25, okay? Which that'll be, that's 53.33, okay? Anyways, so this is the way I present it to you guys. I'm going to say, okay, this is my zero potential, all right? And I'm going to do, I'm going to do like three. An intermediate step. I'm gonna say it's state one, right? State two, right? And then state three will be like when it's compressed. So this is state three. So my first step is gonna say, okay, my total energy of the system at this point. Remember, my way of doing it, I'm saying my zero potential is at the plate. Okay. So my system initially the block will have a potential energy at the at the beginning so i'm going to say i have my weights times h1 right um, there's no kinetic energy because it's still at rest and all springs are uncompressed right there's no spring potentials here so my my uh, potential energy has to equal all the energy at state two, okay? So what do I have at state two? Well, at state two, my my object is actually moving, right? It's falling already, so it does have some some form of kinetic energy. That's my zero potential, so I don't have any potential energy, right? So plus zero potential energy, and again, my springs are not taken into account here because my springs aren't compressed here, so. Uh, uh, potential energy is coming from the springs and gravitational force are all zero. Okay. So what do I do here? It's just 75 times h1, which is just five feet, equals. Oops. 75 divided by 32.2 v2 squared, and then solving for v2, I end up with a um, velocity of 17.94 feet per second. Okay. Good. Remember, this is my zero potential. So y going up is negative. Sorry, positive. Y going down is negative. All right. So now I'm going to do the next step. Let's switch to red. So the next step, next step is my all this kinetic energy right so at state two I only have kinetic energy right so I only have one half uh, m 
V2 squared, which we already have. This is energy at state 2. Right? Nothing's changed. Okay? That all has to equal to the energy of the system at state 3. Now, at state 3, my, my system or my block has had a change in height. Okay? So that means I do have a, a gravitational potential energy uh, term, which we're going to have weight. Remember, this is my change in height. Okay, which is S. So it's the weight times my change in height, let's call it H3, plus, um, well, I guess I have two springs, right? The uh, AC times K, they're, they're constant, right? Times the length. So the compressed, the compressed distance squared, all right, um, and then I have my uh, last term, which is spring B, which is K prime, right, times the distance. S minus 0.25. So very similar, very similar to um, to what the book does. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna be solving for we're gonna solve this part, this section of the of the equation, and we're gonna end up with on the left hand side we have one half 75 divided by 32.2 times our v2 squared, which we already know, it's 17.94 because we solved for it. That's all equal to the weight, 75. H3, remember H3 is very important that you get the sign correctly. H3 is negative um, S, okay, so it's minus S, okay, plus K, so we're going to have these two go away s squared actually let's just plug in the k here so it's a thousand s squared plus one half times k prime which is 1500 s minus 0.25 squared all right and you, you can already tell like oh, okay this is a harder way but this is this is i'm just showing you that um there are multiple ways to approach these energy problems, and you're not necessarily wrong if you don't do it just like the book does. Okay. Um, but yeah, th this is a little more a little more complex, just because we're going to end up with a quadratic equation. Um, so when you work all this out, what I had for my quadratic equation was 1750 s squared, right? Uh, you got to this term, just for, you know, this term will end up being um, plus 0 0.0625. Don't forget to f do the, f the factoring here. Okay? Equals that. Anyways, my quadratic equation here becomes 1750s squared minus 50s uh, minus... 327 point which I think I have 935 yeah 935 that sounds familiar when we solve the, this quadratic equation we end up with a positive s and a negative uh, s right now I'm going with the positive s which is 0.58 feet okay so remember remember what we had it with a book does the book says okay I have my full, the, the total distance of the springs A and C are, have been compressed at a distance of 0.58 feet and then the total distance that um, springs AC have been compressed is 0.58 as well in this other way of doing it okay and then 
the distance that B is compressed is just going to be 0.58 minus the 0.25, right? And then we end up with like 0.33 feet, all right? And that's and that's pretty, and that's it. Um, so yes, the first way is you dialed in. You 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 did it on one in one equation. Um, you know you, you took the shortest route because you recognized it. Again, not everyone will recognize that. Some people will, will do it in a couple steps. Um, but just know that if you're following the rules of the conservation of energy, you should be okay with doing it the, this other longer way. Okay. So here are two forms or two routes of, of uh, two approaches to solving the same problem. Okay. Um, just make sure your math is sound, your physics, uh, make sure you're applying the physics concepts correctly, and that way they won't fail you. Okay. Because physics don't lie. All right, guys. Thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, just drop them down below. I'll try to get back to you. And don't forget to like and subscribe the video if you found it very useful. Um, I hope the best for you guys. Hopefully this, this video helped you guys out a lot. Thanks, guys.